calling other people unclean. Yesterday, I spoke about how beware should you be of single-issue teachers. Because there are various people and even professionally trained theologians who you will encounter who read the Bible through a particular lens. But that lens is not, well, I'm looking for something like the redemptive theme from Genesis to Revelation. I'm looking for the Messiah. I'm looking for God's dealings with Israel. No, it's instead frequently some kind of controversial social issue. And today, we will be hearing more and more people reading the Bible through a LGBTQ lens. And you're going to see some very creative interpretations and approaches to various passages. A few days ago, on my social media feed, I saw the following meme appear. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. Acts 10, 28. You cannot call LGBTQ plus people abominations before God, because God has already declared that no one is to be called that. Calling them abominations is literally going against God's decree. Here, you see Peter's conclusion from the vision of the sheet. God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean to mean that you are not to regard homosexual intercourse as being an abomination. Any of us who've been in the Messianic community for some period of time are aware of how Peter's vision of the sheet is commonly interpreted throughout Christianity to mean that God has abrogated the dietary laws of the Torah. And frequently in today's Messianic community, some of the details of the sheet notwithstanding, we will quickly invoke Acts 10.28. The vision of the sheet is about people. It is about pagan Gentiles, Greeks and Romans, who are to be regarded as clean because of the sacrifice of Israel's Messiah. I'll give it for the meme. It does properly conclude how the vision of the sheet is about people. But then it draws some inappropriate and incorrect conclusions. The first one, various high sins in the Torah, such as same-sex intercourse, they are what are referred to as abominations, not the people who commit them. Human beings made in God's image are not an abomination. But there are various high sins in the Torah regarded as abominations. Number two, consistently, unless you are on the extreme fringe right, consistently, conservatives who oppose homosexuality, who oppose same-sex intercourse, they're the ones who will say that it's homosexual intercourse that is the abomination, not the people. I know it's a tired line, but it's love the sinner, hate the sin. Number three, the declaration, particularly for the Jewish apostle Peter in the first century, that mainly Greek and Roman pagans were to be regarded as clean because of the work of Yeshua, Peter was not supposed to fear interacting with them, was not an abrogation of the Torah standard that particularly rendered them as unclean, specifically idolatry and sexual immorality, simply because the vision declares that these people are to be regarded as clean because now there is 
permanent atonement, a permanent sacrifice available by Israel's Messiah, Yeshua, on the tree. That doesn't all of a sudden mean that the standard of sin has been abrogated. It doesn't mean that idolatry is acceptable. And it doesn't mean that homosexuality is acceptable. And for that same matter, it doesn't mean that various forms of prohibited heterosexual activity are acceptable. The final atonement for the sin of all human beings has been offered in Yeshua. For the first century Jewish believers, they were to regard their pagan neighbors as clean because of Yeshua's work. And they needed to get over any potential fears or anxieties in declaring the good news to these people who, while being rendered ritually unclean by many high sins, were to still be regarded as clean because of the work of Yeshua. Their sin, their ungodliness, was not going to affect somebody like Peter should Peter have been adequately performing the work of of the Lord. Now we're going to be encountering many more creative interpretations of passages like Acts 10.28, where a very dramatic, divisive, and controversial social matter is eisegeted into the text. It is sad that throughout a great deal of religious history, and even today, that there have been people targeted by Religious leaders, pastors, even denominations, people targeted as abominations rather than their behavior being regarded as an abomination. And as I've said it many times, even though homosexuality, same-sex intercourse is what seems to get a little more attention, there are plenty forms of prohibited heterosexual intercourse that are just as much regarded as an abomination. So how does the Lord give us, as we see these kinds of things circulate, and we know that it's going to affect people we interact with, perhaps people we're even related to or are close friends with? How do we ask the Lord to give us a heart to, as Peter's vision was to communicate, they are to be regarded as clean because of the sacrifice of Yeshua, Their sinful activity should not affect born-again believers in a negative way, in essence, drawing us into those sinful behaviors. They are to be regarded as clean, but nevertheless, we are to declare the good news to them. And how do we do that, especially given the fact that these kinds of matters, highly divisive, highly controversial, many people don't want to touch them. And I suspect that as we see these sorts of matters unfold and as we continue to talk about it, the Lord will give each and every one of us creative, effective solutions to be representatives of his kingdom to those people who are not abominations, but nevertheless are involved in perhaps a diverse array of activities which are regarded as such.